I got my first horse when I was about 10 or 12. Roy Rogers and Gene Archer were my heroes. I think if you're a true horseman, this is as good as it gets. All right, you ready? Let's go get them. <laughs> to, to take a wild horse and bond with them and get them where you can ride them, it just doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> I just want one that's kind of easy going and gentle and... Well, you're not going to be gentle. I got news for you. Oh, gentle temperament, I guess I mean. Yeah. I just hope that they're not the little tiny ones. I hope they're the big ones. Yeah. I like a big horse. You get a big one, I'll take a tiny one. Give me a better one than you gave her. 8108. Well, the deal is, and I make it clear, you get what you get. It's luck of the draw, and so you do with what you got. Think you come first, a bay or a black? Bay. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. You're all right. You're all right. Yeah, smell me. See, I ain't bad. Hey, he's, he's smelling my hand. Yeah. That's yeah, a good sign. Good sign. Nobody's going to hurt you. Hey, yeah, we're going to get to know each other. He's scared to death. He's a little small. That's all right. Here he comes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he's beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, Willie. Boy, he's a big one. She got the big one, I got the little one. <laughs> All right. I outweigh my horse. <laughs> you outweigh your horse. <laughs> These will be Waylon and Willie. It's all right, Waylon. We hope that in about 90 days, these guys will be sterling examples of fine riding horses, and we'll take them to four hours and just dazzle the horse world. <laughs> Have goals for one day. Okay. And don't try to do too many things at once. Just have one goal, and when he meets that goal, that's it. That'll be done. I'd like to touch him. <laughs> that would be a good goal. <gasps> I've never done any of this stuff before. I've just been basing it on, you know, what I've read. I actually think that's the point. I think that's why they have this kind of program. I think that they want to show that, like, a real person can really do it. I thought she was crazy. I mean, I really did. I thought she was crazy. You understand he's like really wild. I mean, like crazy wild. She's like, oh, they won't be that bad. I'm like, okay, I don't think so, but okay. Get. Go. He won't run. Go, let's go. Usually when you're training your first horse, it's a yearling that you then trained up as a two-year-old and then you break it. And to start with a Mustang is sort of like starting out your singing career singing opera. He's trying to ignore me. I'm doing this because I think it's a good cause. I just hope that the, I learn a lot and I, I want the horse to go to a good home. What are your biggest fears going ahead? Being able to get on the horse, being able to 
you know, contact the horse, walk the horse, lead the horse. I might come back later and try again. Give him some time. And then come back in the morning and try again. He's still trying to feel us out and what's going on because um, his world literally turned 180 degrees from where it was, like not even, you know, 72 hours ago. His world's basically been rocked. So he probably doesn't like people too much. It's about developing the trust and right at the beginning when you get them and especially they're so wild and they're going to be tearing around and it's tough to get that kind of communication. A lot of it's body language. I had no experience at all in horse training or I had no idea what to do. Nick and I would just sit in the field and we'd just sit there and watch body language and then copy them. That's mostly what we're getting our educations from is from the horse. Like how would a horse approach a scary object? What that horse would do would just walk back and forth between that object until he got comfortable with it and approach it. First actual scratch. He's showing his bravery, he's showing his courage, he's showing himself. That's what I like to see. He's not hiding anything. I'm shocked at how fast I am getting close to him. Say you trust one of these horses until the day you really trust him. Right, come at you. Come here, buddy. Come on. Settle down. When I first brought him in Saturday night, 
and I already said that he's a kind of a horse that will challenge you. So Monday morning, I went out there early in the morning and I started started to figure him out. That's when he charged me. It's been a long time since I've seen a horse do that. He's like, doesn't want to be close to humans or something. Would you go anywhere near Charlie's horse? Not in a million years. He's still on the, the jumpy site, but after he gets himself quiet, then he's going to be my best friend. He's got his territory, I got my territory, so somewhere he's going to invite me into his territory. That's the time I'm going to say, okay, he's, he's trusting me. I was, was raised around here when I was growing up. Uh, I didn't have any siblings that were the same age as me. And my mom had some sheep, cows, and horses. Every morning she told me to go get the horses. So I started communicating with horses. When I was young, it was different. It don't matter how old it is, how fast it is, I could get on anything. This competition means a whole lot of things to me. I want to challenge myself and I want to, to show myself that I am still capable of doing. Even though I'm aching here and there, but I'm still young at heart. He's going to turn out pretty good. That's if I can get on. <laughs> That's if he can let me get on. Out there, if they say Indian, they think we're still in buckskins. We're still walking around out there on the wild. Basically, we're living the same life, but we're just on the reservation, that's all. It's just a challenge, I think. That's mainly just to show that I'm coming from the reservation and I can do the same amount of things anybody can do. So I just want to show that to this horse again. That's all I want to do. The hardest part is um, getting them to trust you, getting them to be your friend. If I relax, the horse will relax. If you think you're gonna muscle a Mustang and go in there and be all macho to it, it's gonna do the same thing back to you. Okay, if you notice, the little one hides behind the big one. <laughs> the Mustang Micro Competition is, I, I guess it, it brings out the competitive spirit in us. We want to compete, and we, and we want to win. I'm getting older, I know I've got a limited number of years to do this, so I, I want this to be a, a good one. Whoa, it's okay, you're all right. I'm getting him to move the way I want him to move rather than the way he wants to move. I'm making him go directions I pick, not what he picks. Whoa. 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 We're a little older than most people that are trying to do this, and um, 
we realize that, that we don't have the same balance and the same res, uh, responses and reactions that, that we had, but so we have to make up for it by being careful and use a little wisdom. Come on, big guy. Let's go. Now go. Okay, get over here. Might ought to go out for a minute. So the smaller one's spookier. He's a little more unsure. And I think he's got more fear than the black one. Oh. Back off. Better take, take pressure off of him. He's going to go through it. He's a lot wilder. I think the little guy is going to be quite a challenge, more so than I originally thought. Waylon is going to have to have a lot more just sit there and talk to him time before we start chasing him around in a round pen because he's just too apprehensive right now. He'll hurt himself for me, one of the two. He'll find out that when he's touched, it's a good thing, not a bad thing. But you got to get to that point. And that's where patience comes in, which I'm not overly loaded with. And so I'll count on Evelyn to help me with that part. Small circles. So now I want to stop. Face to me. You see how keep it on. Try to buy me. I'm going to bend his neck on the other side. Hold him. Now I can jump. If I get it on. I can pad his, his friend. I enjoy what I do when horses and Mom say, do you breed in horses and dream in horses? Yeah. It's the, the way I am. She's slow. You have to be very sensitive in your hands. No, no get too hard. If he follow me, it's right there, he did a nice turn. People don't understand how hard it is to work with these horses. Three months you have to do a lot. Take some time. There, it's coming. And I release it. He will understand in a minute what I'm looking for. Now I want to turn him. Stop. I, I would say everybody has a gift, but uh, his gift, working with horses, I think it's great. It's hard to find people with that kind of skills to go for a tall, wild horse to make a submissive horse. It's hard, but it's not impossible. And the key, patience. This is good for today. But I think, you know, he's doing good. It's something you need to understand. It's like a gift that you get from God. He's a smart horse. We're doing good. We're doing good. I, I'm happy because he responds to me and I want to see him happy too. Well, I've always known since I was a little girl that I, I was always destined for something great. I didn't know what or why. I just always had this inner feeling like, you know what, I'm going to be something amazing. 
I've always said, I'm a daredevil with a big smile. Anytime I would do anything as a kid, it was never hard enough for me. You know, I was always that evil Knievel. I'm not scared. I picked him up on Saturday, and then Monday morning, I rode him. And then by the third ride, we were riding down the road in a residential area. We walked through the Taco Bell drive through crossing crosswalks, and he just do, 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 I mean, he's just mellow. Considering he's a Mustang, you know. Ooh, he's a Mustang, that means he's wild, and he rears up on his hind legs, and he eats children for breakfast, but he's not. He's just quiet and gentle, you know. <laughs> My signature thing that I'm known for is standing up on a horse and stepping off of a horse when a horse is moving full speed. I like to do that. Um, I also like to swing up on horses. A lot of people don't swing up on horses, especially a woman. Most, most girls don't. Um, I like to do anything that makes you go, wow, how did you teach that horse to do that? I like the touch on the next stop. Really what it comes down to, and what I've learned doing all of these competitions with the Mustang Makeovers is, it's always been about the horse and that we all just want to help these horses get great homes. I always say never fall in love with a horse, but I think I'm going to fall in love with this horse. I usually am pretty careful about talking about what I do and the level of my education. And of course, this only can occur when things are at equilibrium, so keep that in mind too. I think when you think you hear PhD engineer, you have a certain stereotype in your, ha in your mind, and I don't think I fit that stereotype very well. But my PhD is in biomedical engineering, and my bachelor's of science is also in biomedical engineering. So we've limited our number of variables to just the, just the fraction. And then I have a coursework master's, which is like a master's of science in just general engineering. And the dynamic between my day and my evening is just, it's like two different worlds. He's trying to take advantage of you. He's not watching you at all. The horse is nowhere near leadable yet. He's still wild, for sure. He's still a wild animal. She's a perfectionist. Most, most academics are. Well, most I mean, engineers I, are. Most engineers are. Well, she's, she's used to always getting what she wants. I mean, and you know. And being perfect. Yeah, being. And being good at it. Keep going. Just be patient. He's trying to figure out what you want. Keep going. It's okay. Just easy, easy, girl. Wow. Not like this. <laughs> I know. He's just being aggressive. He's just a little more aggressive than I was hoping for.
if she listens to Kareem, if she just, if she just kind of. Is she gonna do that? No. I think that I think it'll be I think I think if she at least listens to Kareen and what she has to say I think that they'll be able to come out of it in one piece I don't know I mean what else can you do I mean, it's just it's frustrating it makes me you know maybe somebody more experienced belongs the horse like this This is the way, you know, you have to work when you have to just take your time and, and read first the personality. I want to stop him. There. I'm going to work in his feet. Like now, now, once, stop. It's like if you're going to the ballet. You need to learn in slow steps, and soon do you know how to maneuver, control your feet. You can build your speed. It's almost the same thing with horses. So I don't want to make my horse sad, but how to make? He, he need to learn this. I'm not forcing the horse. I just teaching him. Become. I'm going to help him to make him lay down. He's a special for us. He's a good looking horse and a very smart. And a, all, pretty much all our brothers, we are compadres. So, compadres is a mean like a, a god, uh, god, friends. god friends. There again. Name him compadre. Let's can sit a little bit. Another compadre in the familia. One, one more compadre, yes. <laughs> I grew up in, in Mexico and we did a lot of uh, farm work but most of the time it's uh, ranch work. Good, good. I'm so glad you know I grew up in the ranch. Well, not easy, tough. You learn a lot of good things and Take your time. I really right. have in my heart. No run, run, no run. It's in a slow motion. Oh. If you run, you always going to run, okay? But it's why I've been working so hard to to have a little bit of my dream and where I live right now. In 2001, we started our company. So we start with me and my brother. And now, sometimes we keep like 10 people. In 2005, we buy 20 acres. We start building our stable. It's not big, you know, but at least it's yours. Now we're in betrothal. Now we're training horses to compete in Forgo, Texas. It'll be tough, huh?
My parents always taught me if you want something, you have to go out and get it yourself. I just wanted horses. When I was two years old and I looked outside our van window and just saw them and just how beautiful they were. Chris, if like, if there's like a horse whisperer out there, you know, he'd be it. He's got that extra connection. Christopher was at farrier school and they had this little baby in a ring outside. She was six months old and she was untouchable. She was wild, and he asked if he could go out and just play with the little horse. And the guy said, no, she's dangerous. She'll rear up, she'll strike you. And he went in the first night, and he was walking around with her. He was petting her everywhere. And, and the guy that owned the school, he goes, there's no way. There's no reason to abandon a horse if he needs help. I'm a slow learner and I have a hard time reading. With a school, if that kid's lost, he's lost. And then he's struggling, he gets angry. They gave us a good foundation on who we are and what we can do. That's what our parents gave us and that's what we're gonna give to the horses. Good job. Good job. Wow. Nice, Christopher. Comfortable. Wow. You can breathe now. <laughs> you got up, Christopher. Good you job. Can breathe now. Boy, Randy. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah. The whole point of the competition in its purest form is to be able to show that you can develop these types of partnerships. The secret is spending that time with the horse so that when something new happens, they're not going to wig out on us. It doesn't have to be that old kind of cowboy mentality where you have to treat the horse pretty rough. You know, you can get them to this point without touching a single spur, without kind of really forcing a horse into it. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Whoa. Good boy. I used to like to tell people, they would ask me, why in the world would somebody live in St. Joe? And I would always tell them that, well, there's no red lights, there, there's a post office, a gas station, and a bank. Uh, there's not much goes on, but if you have to stand in line to do anything, we just don't do it. And that makes for a pleasant life. George is a a man's man. He's a cowboy. I know when uh, when we got together, he, he talked about you know meeting a lot of women that couldn't deal with his lifestyle. We've been married for three years. I was 65 and he was 56. Mm -hmm. I'm one of eight siblings. Uh, all seven of the others met and married their lifetime mate when they were very young. And then I, I come along and I guess it's kind of like a school teacher once said, well, next we're going to do it again and again and again until we get it right. You know? and <laughs> I did it several times and now thankfully I think I got it right. <laughs> so uh, if you don't mind me asking, how many times have you been married? Well, she's number seven. <laughs> I told her, you're, you're a riverboat gambler, you know, to marry me, you're just straight out of your gourd. That, that kind of come across my mind, too. <laughs> and now 
ladies and gentlemen. I think we're a pretty good pair. I think if we'd have probably met a long time ago, could have kept him from having so many marriages. I just am amazed every day that I get up that it's that that she was there and and she was the person so much uh, that I wanted. Everything about her was what I wanted. Nearly everything about her. And, <laughs> uh, just thankful that I found her. We're 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 pretty good friends. That's the thing I think it makes it work. Come on. Well, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Had a boy. Come on. You are a hard headed little sucker. Waylon's a little, he's Fight. a little outlaw, fat, feisty little fella. Don't you bite me. He is just nasty. He's just got a nasty little disposition. Whoa, whoa. Sooner or later, me and him have got to have a come to Jesus on this biting thing. Oh boy. I expect instant gratification and you just don't get it doing this. Is that fun? Huh? You have fun? You have fun? Whoa. It's hard in a hundred days to get a horse to do what we gotta get them to do. Okay. Much less get one to do that that guy that, that has the attitude that he had. He's been a pill. He's been a pill. <laughs> Don't you mind me. This horse may be untrainable. He may not have a gentle bone in his body. I've, I've had a lot of worry time because he, the horse has been hard to figure out. He's been different than any other horses. And it is, it is scary because I don't, I don't want him to get hurt. My age, it always hurts when you hit the ground, but uh, my doctor's words to me recently were, George, you are too long a tooth to be doing this. And I told him that, well, when I get busted up, you put me back together and I'll keep pulling up in the saddle. As long as you can do your job, I'm gonna do mine. And I think that's as close as I'm gonna do to getting on him today. say that uh, a horse you got to treat it like a woman if you touch her in the wrong place she's gonna hit you he's a lot of horse the way I see it and if you try to push him too much he don't like it my dad's been spending time with him he's been been doing a lot of stuff with him to actually earn his trust. He's already got the trust, but my dad don't have the trust on getting on him. Are you ready to get on him? Not really. I'm not worried about how many days I have left before I get on or how many weeks I have left to get on. 60 more days for me. 60 days is nothing. If I'm gonna get on, I'm going to do it by myself. In case this old man gets bucked off, nobody's going to see him. I'm going to make sure I clean the mess where I fell too, so I don't leave no evidence. Living on the Navajo Reservation is tough. The job is scarce. The way of the living is hard. 
So the best thing to do is try to find a way to where you can support yourself. And Carlos has come out to the point where he is making a living helping other people um, start their horses. And he's been su successful in that area. This is the first time he's out. I'm getting him used to and familiar to his surroundings where he's going to be at most of the time. Following me anywhere I go. If a horse don't know how to lead, I drag it down. A couple times back up and down. I got a horse that's leading. I've just been around horses ever since the day I can get on. That's, that's all I do. When he was little, he always used to imitate training a horse or saddling up a horse. Usually his horse was a couch or a coffee table or something. When he was a little kid, one morning he came up to me and says, buy me a horse. So I got him a shell and pony. And I said, okay, you take this rein, you pull it, you go this way, you pull this side, go that way. And if you get bucked off, climb back on. If I hear you crying, I sell the horse. So today he's still at it. In a way, what I have thought about when I was young, he's doing it. Sometimes it brings tears. It's hard to talk about him. It's, um, it's more joyful talking about him and I'm really proud of him. I want him to be out there somewhere, make a name for himself. <laughs> okay, we have to go get you ready for school, okay? Yeah. Can you say hi? Hi. What's your name? Liger. And how old are you, Riker? Four. I've always said there's two sides of Wiley and Wilson. There's, you know, the public side, and then there's a the very private side that has a family, and, you know, I'm a mother, and, and, and I'm a single mom, which makes it even harder as it is. And, Kinsley, stop. Here, give it to me. There's such a part of me that's so different that that's a fun mom, a different mom. Not your every average day, you know, soccer mom, no. My mom, my mom stands up on horses and drags tarps and she shoots guns and she, she's a daredevil and she's this, you know. That to me is so much more fun than I make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. The build up to this competition is so, intense you know and you just don't know there's a lot of pressure on, on us as trainers judges are looking for the showmanship part of it so it's important for us trainers to also look our very best let alone the horses and obviously there's there's a persona that i want to emulate and i you know i want to be professional and i want to be i want to look my best i want my horse to look his best and so so there therefore you know fake eyelashes and uh lipstick and whatever it takes <laughs> Even a push-up bra, I've even used that before. <laughs> I like, I like to, I like to turn heads, I'm not gonna lie. You know, what girl doesn't? People go, did you just see that? I did, and I liked it a lot. That's what I like, you know. Holy bananas, hold on to the monkeys. There's gonna be a problem if we don't slow down. <laughs> Time to go to work. What I don't know about this horse is he's totally unpredictable. There's nothing about him that, that is in sync. <laughs> you get it out of your system. I would just suspect a lot of people would give up on him. Why, 
Yeah. Good boy, Waylon. Good boy. You okay? Huh? You're all right, Waylon. Okay. Easy, easy boy. Where do I get him? Why didn't he move out? Easy boy. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Move. Good. The smart people about this say don't rush it. Come on, move. Come on, move. But on the other hand, I know you got to move forward or you won't get them where they gotta be. Move it. I'm gonna believe that he's going to smooth out and be a super good horse. I just believe he's going to. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Yeah, that's a good boy, Willie. Get you all brushed up. Good boy, Willie. I have bonded with Willie. It's hard not to. A horse like him that, uh, gosh, I come out in the morning and he he's watching for me and I walk out and he comes up to me. Uh, uh, a lot of it, I know he wants to eat. <laughs> he loves to eat. Come on. George is a, when I say, you know, uh, that horse loves me, and his big thing was, that horse don't love you. He tolerates you, you know. Come on. Come on, Willie. I know. She, you, you'll want to keep the horse. I know. And, and I'm going to have to keep telling you that. We that the best thing we do for those horses is do the best job we can training them yeah. and, and get them in the people's hands that'll ride them. He's, he is right. I mean, he's, he's right. But, but I can just see my emotions. You take them in and you, you taught them to trust you. You know, it's kind of... <laughs> Give them away. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's like almost a mother, you know, and, and you raised your child up and, and then you've got to turn them out. <laughs> I try to to teach my horse every day something different. We have only a hundred days, but your horse they need to offer you what you can do. They will have a very good relationship, and I think uh, he's doing excellent. Not even great. Excellent with our horse. All my preparation, all my training is to see if that horse let me do all my rope trick in his back. Want to do a to be nice circle and your horse is in the middle. I stay on him and if he let me do that, I, I'm going to be proud of my horse. When I ride my horse, it's something wonderful. You really breathe and feel love, you know. I get in touch with him. He's a, he's a good friend, good buddy. I want to keep him. We don't have a lot of money, but if we get him a good price, you know, we like to bring him home. It's amigo. It's your friend. You invest him too much time, and I hate to give away, you know, to somebody take away from me. Oh, amigo. Oh. 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 Oh.
boy. You know, there's so much emotion that goes in this. I mean, you think about when you pick them up and then you, you're training them. I mean, you're just on this roller coaster of a ride and it's all the miles you drive, all the food you feed, all, you know, all the, all the shoes and the everything. I mean, all the, just this, you just do so much. And it's all because we want to win. And, and hopefully that would pay off. And so to win would just be like, wow, it was all worth it. There's nobody who's better in competition. I love competing. I love being in a really challenging situation because I thrive on that. It could, there could be 50,000 people there and ESPN and I'm like, cool as a cucumber. I can memorize patterns, so if they came up to me and said, you have to know this in five minutes and go do it, I could do it. I just like having all the pressure on me. I think you have to believe you're worthy of winning it. My goal is to go bareback and bridalist. Okay, I think it would just amaze everybody. Well, the risk is if you do it, you have to be perfect because if you aren't perfect, you won't win. <laughs> so you have to know without a shadow of a doubt the horse is going to do everything you asked and that he's going to perform well. And if you can walk, trot, canter without a bridle and without a saddle, that's pretty impressive in 100 days. Wait, let's see if I can do it. Yes, good job, buddy. There's a lot I expect from a horse. That was really good. And I don't want to hear whiny excuses like, I'm scared, I don't want to do it, I'm fat, I'm lazy, I'm spoiled. I don't want to hear that. What I want to hear is, okay, we're going to do it. Let's be a team. Keep going. Whoa, I'm going to fall off. Let's go wow the crowd. Let's go make them go. Harold, did you just see that? I think that girl just rode bareback without a bridle. Somebody needs to post something about her. She's special. Ow. You little shit. He slammed my foot. Hey, we're not going that way. We're going my way. He, he's making forward progress, but it's sort of like, you know, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. All right. Come on, buddy. We are going to calm down, right? You little shit. I want that behavior out of him before I'm on him. I've made the mistake of not, and then it's me on the ground. Dealing with horses is not if you get hurt. It's, it's when, when and, and how bad. bad. A couple times he got me off. Um, one time I landed on my head, but I was wearing a helmet. She hit her head hard. It was, it was a perfect pitch. I mean, he stuck his front end, that back end went up, that English saddle popped her out, and she Superman right over his ears. And her arms didn't hit first. I mean, she landed on her head and then rolled onto her, her neck and shoulder and just sort of flipped. She, she got a heck of a concussion. I would really like to know what she honestly thinks about that horse's performance. If she's going to Fort Worth with delusions, then she's not only setting her horse up for failure, but she's gonna put herself and anyone who's in the arena with her in danger. Left, left, left. No. Come on. Sweet Jesus. All right. We're gonna do this. Yes. Thank God. Let's do it again. Good measure. All right. It was not good. Come on. We have fights. And he goes through kind of periods of like, I don't know, he's really good, he's really progressing, and then he's just terrible for like a week. So I'm hoping that the competition happens during a good week. We work every day. And some days are great, and some days are horrible. He's awesome. Having a hundred days to learn, to learn everything that he's learned is quite a feat. Kudos to him.
give him a minute in the dark so he doesn't know what's happening. I'm going to take away that element of sight. And I want to see how far I can push it to how far he can trust me. That's a fence. That's a fence. There you go. Nope, that's another fence. That'll be another fence. That'll be a fence. It's all communication. And if I tell him to turn right, that he's trusting me enough that I'm not going to turn him into a wall or into a ditch. Going downhill. Slow. Slow. Take it easy. Take it easy. Going this way. Just trust me. Trust me. Take it, take it easy. There we go. Okay, okay. All right. Ask him anything, he'll do it without any hesitation or any fight. It's all right. Oh, up, 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 up. You got it. You got this. There you go. You're on the bridge. There you go. Coming to the edge. Coming. Oh, hey, not too fast. Coming to the edge. Slow, slow. <laughs> Where is it? You go. It's right there. There you go. That boy, that horse has made me as the most happiest person on this earth. He's just a good horse. That's why he needs a good home. We don't have the money. Don't be thinking that all of a sudden, you know, we're going to be, how, how are we going to take them through the winter? How, you know, you understand all of this before we get involved with this. And it's tough. It's still emotionally tough. But um, it, this is something that they decided that they wanted to do. All that they know is what you've taught them. So it's getting to that point and then having to say bye is kind of rough. And there's no chance of keeping them this year? Nope. Which is kind of tough to say, but we're not in the ability to be able to do that. Why not? Uh, Money-wise, I guess. Basically, the bottom line. <laughs> so, it's not easy, but realities of the situation. <laughs> we'll go to a new place and kind of show people how awesome they are, so it's kind of gives you a bit of good feelings about it, but still, kind of get a little selfish. Want to keep them, but what can you do? Seems like I'm way behind on everything, but the competition is about 10 days away from him now. And I haven't even get on. It, maybe I'm scared to, to tell you the truth. Okay, come back to you. I'm not gonna hurt you, come on. When come I was on. young and when nobody was around hey. to help me, I used to put them in a small pin and get on and try to move him around in that small space. That's the way I'm gonna do it. He's gotta know that I'm coming down on him. There's gonna be weight on him. Don't you try anything, Comanche. It's just me, your buddy, the person that feeds you every day. I'm scared to tell you the truth. I think I have an extra spare of underwear somewhere. I just want him to move a little bit, take his time. You gotta move up. There you go. It's 
That's all you need. Okay, back up again. Some more. Come on. That's good. Doing pretty good, Comanche. Okay. Turn. Uh, you only have 10 days to work with this horse. Every minute counts, so I can't get off. Only if my son was here. He always wanted to see me get on. I see them take on different horses, but he actually wants to come become best friends with this horse. I think he really loves his horse. Good boy. About three or four weeks into this, we were thinking he wasn't gonna make it. He just wasn't gonna ever come down, but he finally did. And when he did, he just, he just became a good little horse. Good boy. Yes, maybe we just found that, that peace with each other and he settled into me and I settled into him and he has become the best natured horse I believe I have ever worked with in over 50 years. Hey, he side passed. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, Willie, we're behind. <laughs> it was real touching when you started to see them connect. Because <laughs> George had some, some, you know, choice names that he called him at first when he was getting bitten and kicked and thrown into the dirt. Come here, Waylon. Bonding with a horse is a, is a strange phenomenon. Um, thank you, thank you. You feel it as more than you see it, and he's just got me to the point where I, I know that this could be the horse that I'm going to finish my riding days on. Seven weeks ago, I would no, I wouldn't have thought that George would have wanted to adopt this horse because because well, number one, neither of us were bringing these two home. And, and I know he started thinking about wanting to bring him home. Didn't really know what to say, because we'd already, you know, he doesn't want me to bring mine home. <laughs> but I can see, I can see that George needs to bring that horse home. That little Mustang got a lot of heart. That horse is as small as he is, is big enough for George. many emotions right now because I'm wanting to do well, I'm wanting to show Willie well, but it's also sad for me because I know that I won't be bringing him home. And that's, it's hard. but he started bucking. He tried so hard to stay in the saddle, but I got bucked off and I haven't get back on yet. Mm -hmm. 
here, it's going to be different. Either way, I'm going to get on. It's very, it's very calm, quiet. I think, you know, I, he will do a good job tomorrow. Now you're going to come in right here. You're going to come here, keep loping right up, but you can do a drop change, transition, lope, walk, come right on into the box. Okay. Two circles to the right, walk out, and you're done. 100 trainers, 100 horses, 100 days. Quite amazing. Yep, 74. Horse's name is Rembrandt. That's part in motion. One bobble. I mean, if you lead a horse up to the trailer and he's supposed to jump in the trailer and he stalls out, you're out. If you go to pick up his feet and he won't give you his feet, you're out. Serpentine through the cones at a trot and he doesn't trot, you're out. So there's no room for any bobbles. The competition is that stiff. So Nick's you know, walking along and all of a sudden his horse is down, rolling. Everybody thought it was funny. I was horrified. So he just lost. I'm kind of hoping that they're going to look and say, hey, you know, that's a relaxed horse. You've done a good job. And, you know, give them kudos for that as opposed to saying, oh, no, no, we didn't expect that to be happening. So we'll see how it goes. Hip number 34, Dr. Melissa Konselberger, Bryan, Texas. If they can sense that you're scared, they will take advantage of that. So I try to like push those kind of emotions away until we're done. He could start bucking randomly, which he's done. He could do the, the running out the shoulder thing and I could totally miss an obstacle. I had no idea if I could do it or not. Like just absolutely no idea if I'd even get a halter on him. Actually, getting on his back seemed like um, a fairy tale dream. I was getting nervous. I felt like I was going to throw up when she got on. <laughs> She's been proving people wrong from day one, so I was proud of her. That was good. He did good. And I just hope I can take him home with me. Out. Gift number nine, Evelyn Gregory, St. Joe, Texas. Riding Willie. She's got a handful of that horse. No, me too. <laughs> She's just going to give me the sixth time I'm going to get on right in here. Oh, is that right? Yep, yeah. that right. Six times. Wow. Hip number 11 coming into the arena. And this, ladies and gentlemen, will be his sixth ride. Right now, I can't really put myself up into the saddle from the ground. So I hope you can stand still while I do that too. I just want to see how my dad's going to get on his horse. That's all. I'll give it to you, Charles, and we'll watch as you put number six on this horse. I'm scared for him because, like I said, he's getting old. He's just trying to say that I'm still young enough to handle whatever you guys can throw at me. I've been seeing myself right in the competition and have good communication with Kamachi and be a good team. The fear is always there. It never goes away. 
But after the competition, you know you face it, you feel good. One of these days, I'm gonna say I was there. I did it. That'll do it. Six rides, Charles G. I believe we'll call this one six, seven, and eight. It was worth it. Hip number 21, Christopher Kokel. I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling nervous. And I, and I know my horse is gonna pull me through. I, I just have to rely on him and I know I'll be fine. I love him more than love. He's not even once just given me a bad eye or a bad ear. He's just said, okay, we'll, we'll figure this out together. And that's, that's how we've come so far, very, very far in a very short time of time. It's amazing what Sue and I came to be. Christopher Kokel, a boy named Sue. Yes, I pulled what I wanted to pull off. Wow, I did it. Some of the top trainers in the United States are there with their Mustangs, and, and that's, uh, that's that's really a challenge. It, it actually, to me, it's an honor just to be able to go on the same floor with them. Nice work down there, very nice work. Clint Bailey. Time and a good finish. Hip number 55, our entry, George Gregory. George is riding Wayland. That day we brought him in and, and we got him out and put him in his pen and, and he had just terror in his eyes. And, but we didn't give up. Wayland probably taught me more than any other horse ever. He, uh, he, he did teach me that, that you know, patience will pay off. Well, if we could win, I think, <laughs> if we could win, we could show that an old fat guy can still ride a horse. To make the finals would be a highlight. To win it would just be incredible. Thank you, George. Entry number 52. Carlos Ray Key riding, I don't know. It will mean <laughs> everything to me if I make the top team. When I make the top team. There's not any Native American Indian, especially from the Navajo Reservation that's known out there in the, the United States. And I hope he gets out there and does it. One day, he's gonna be out there. And I hope that I'll still be out there with him. Carlos Ray Key from Arizona, riding IDK. Thank you, Carlos. He's gonna show his horse in the Vaquero tradition. And uh, this guy is one to watch. This, this is my favorite. Hip number 50, Jesus Aragui. Well, I am a dreamer, 
and to me it's a dream, you know, to come to Texas and compete. Now Jesus will do his coursework. He's been handling that rope since he was seven. He trained his first horse when he was 14. I know my horse and I know what I have. That's why we're here. If they're good, I come to compete with the good people. Wileen Wilson from Queen Creek, riding Rembrandt. Better buckle up when extreme Wileen rides in the arena. I know a few Texas cowboys that were showed up by her, and they're still trying to get over it. The gal has the eye of the tiger, uh, and you know, she's beautiful and flippin' and crazy and fun and talks like this, and da-da-da, <laughs> and then we'll go in and kick your ass. How would it feel to win? Almost surreal, I would think. Unbelievable, but surreal. For me, I think, I've always been so close, but just never won it, so if I really did win it, it would just be like, I'd do a backflip, probably. That's not an exaggeration, I probably would. Now in the arena, Nicholas Kokel. We've worked on everything that we need to, and I know he's got everything, you know, from side passes to spins. So it's just a matter of, you know, when we actually get out there doing it. Nick Kokel on Renahan. Well done, Nick. My nerves were kind of out of control. Just everything going on. I don't know what happened. We'll get the results here, hopefully pretty soon. And trainers, you're gonna wanna listen up. Here are your top 10 finalists for tonight's Legends Finals. Lots of Chrome, Bill Lopez, Country Boy, and Logan Leach. Monty, Travis Dittmer, Huckleberry and Lanny Leach. Get cool. Lori Grover. Holiday's Ricochet. Miranda Holiday. Rooster. Clint Bailey. Rembrandt and Wileen Wilson. Brainmaker and Taryn Munch. El Compadre and Jesus Haragi. That are your top 10 finalists that you will see tonight in tonight's Legends Finals that begins at 7 o'clock. I would like to have made the finals, but we didn't. That's okay. This is a good horse. He wasn't, but he is. <laughs> and you're still hoping to take him home, right? Yeah, oh yeah. I was way at the bottom. I thought I was up there, but there was probably some stuff that I messed up on. And maybe next year it'll be a lot better. This is everything up to this point. Wileen sitting first, Laney, then Logan, then Bill, then Miranda. Really? Are you serious? How does that work? That's okay. Like I said, we got to make choices, right? And we were here for the horse. Not to teach a horse how to compete, but how to be a partner, you know, so we claim victory. So we'll take it. First of all, it's a clean start. None of your previous scores count. You're going to get four minutes to set up and four minutes to perform. And you're going to be scored on the required maneuvers and on artistic creative performance and overall athletic ability. Folks, welcome, welcome. 
to the finals performance of the 2009 Extreme Mustang Makeover Western Stampede. Stinking boys. Show them what it's all about when the blonde comes walking and a wildcat, boom, from Arizona. They're gonna be like, whoa. I'm hoping so. I want them to be shaking in their boots, like, ugh, not Wileen Wilson, not her. Taryn Munch. He'll definitely be a tough competitor. Um, I've extreme cowboy race against him. He's a national champion, extreme cowboy racer. So watch yourself. are really good. Logan and Lanny Leach, they're very good too. They could be tough. They could be a dark horse for sure. One of the days. Wow. Lanny Leach and Huckleberry. always remember that these are 100 day horses and we get lost in that you know you have to keep watching and keep reminding yourself this horse was wild less than 100 days ago You know, it's, it's a hard competition, but you know, I need to to prove myself I can do. Again, it's all technical. I mean, you could be going around to the right and the horse could, you know, be leaning to the left and switch a lead late and the person in front of you has done perfectly, so that person that did it perfectly is going to get a higher score than you are. It's all about technical stuff. At least I'm done.
Bailey. Clint is really good. He was second last year. He rode bridalist on his last horse. He, he did an amazing job with his horse. Clint Bailey was stunning. And when he put the cow in the pen, and he took the bridle off, and that horse wanted to eat that cow. Go after, you know, watch it, move it. The crowd will scream because it epitomizes what these Mustangs are capable of. She does extremely difficult maneuvers in her lead changes, which is where the horse is almost dancing. Where to the music at the lope or the canter, it'll take two strides on the right side, jump up and take two strides switching leads on the left side. Come up, take two strides on the right side, two strides on the left side incredibly difficult because you see they're changing both the front and the back leg and then they're hopping up and doing this two strides two strides two strides all in the same rhythm
He's taken $350, but he earned your hearts and your applause, and this is one fine horse. In eighth place, for in the holiday ride, holidays in seventh place, is Travis Lindner, Logan Leach, and Country Boy. Lori Grover. In fourth place, Lanny Leach and Huckleberry. All right, top three now. In third place, Karen Munch and Rainmaker. In second place, riding minister is Clint Bailey. Well, there's no suspense now. There's one horse left without a ribbon on it, and that horse is Rembrandt with Wileen Wilson. You know, I know he's a great horse, I make someone a great horse. And that's, well, that's the whole reason we do this, is to get him a great place to live, so. Okay, see y'all tomorrow, 10 a.m. Be here to get one of these great Mustangs. The Sunday's it. It's it's where the journey ends. Sunday's where he finds his new home. Kind of a bittersweet day. In my mind, I know that I've got to let him go, but in my heart, it's it's, it's hard because I do. I mean, I've, I've bonded and, and I love him. I just hope he understands. Hope he understands. I'm worried, Doug. I'm just afraid that somebody will take him away, and I don't know. He has his bad days. Let's see one. So I just hope he's having one today. trust one person. I don't think I'm going to give him up that easy. If I don't get him back, I'm going to really hope he goes to somebody that really appreciates him. And, and it, it'll hurt. It was really hard. Hey, guys, I, I want to tell you, this little horse is a 
George doesn't get him. It will devastate him. He'll have a hole in his heart. Oh, he's going to eat his half. Two and a quarter. Been ready to get the Nagami 25. Been ready to get the Nagami 25. All right, he's going home with him. I, I will remember this one for a long time. We didn't win anything as far as the ribbons go, but we um, were both going home better. This is hip number 50. This is El Capadre, trained by Jesus Jauregui. A good horse. I am now, 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 Six fifteen, where to get to get a half. Now seven, bless you. And now seven, now half. Half, and where to get a half. Now eight, eight, and to get 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 to loves this horse, but what he told me, when I asked him without any preemption, Chewie, do you want your horse? Yes, but, you know, I only have a couple, a thousand, two thousand dollars to spend. But if I, it could go to somebody really, really good, then, then I would be okay with that. My thousand dollars is too much for me. I love it. He's, I'm going to keep the horse in my heart because we've been working in there with good, good friends. That's why my compadre. See, compadres all life.